the way I go about my business and my life is to say, say to myself, okay, well, I could be wrong about that. Mm. I could be wrong about this. You know, wow. it's, I mean, even, even the, the book that I wrote follow on to extreme ownership, uh-huh. the book is called the dichotomy of leadership. And yeah. what's interesting about this book. So the, the dichotomy of leadership is like, you can't be extreme in one direction or the other, right? You can't be, if you're, if you're in a leadership position, you can't talk all the time, right? Obviously as a boss, you need to communicate. You need to talk mm-hmm. to your people. But if you talk too much, guess what happens? People start stop listening yes. to you. You're putting out too much information. They don't know what's important and what's not. So that's bad. You can't go too far in that direction. The other direction is you can't not talk enough and now no one knows what's going on. No one knows what's happening. So you have to be balanced and that's the whole idea of the dichotomy of leadership. But probably the first dichotomy in leadership that I had to say to myself, you know what, I'm, I, there's another side to this is I used to tell the young SEAL officers that you have to be aggressive. You got to be default aggressive. That's how you got to be. Mm. Because when something's going on, you got to be aggressive to make that, get that problem solved. Right. And if you're not being aggressive, then you're hesitating. Well, then you can get killed. Okay, so there you go. And that's what I used to tell guys. And as I that's tell- extreme. That's an extreme Yes, style. that's the problem with it. Yeah. And so the question is, can you be too aggressive? Yes. Absolutely. You can, hey, there's a machine gun nest over there. Let's attack it. So you charge up the hill and everyone dies. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've been too aggressive. So what you have to do is you have to be balanced. And that's probably, so, so even as I had these kind of mm. mantras, yeah. like default aggressive, can you do too much of that? Yes, you can. So you end up with this, what do you end up with? Can you be too passive? Absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. now we're not making any progress. Now we're getting crushed by the enemy because we didn't maneuver. Okay, so that's bad. So where do you want to be? You want to be balanced. Even the idea of extreme ownership. Can you take too much ownership? Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> really? You, yes, you can. But I thought you said you need to take ownership of everything. Two different things. Listen oh, to this. Okay. If you're working for me and I say, okay, here's the mission that I want you to accomplish tonight. Mm-hmm. Here's the people I want you to take. Here's the weapons I want you to bring. Here's the vehicles I want you to bring. Here's the, here's the route I want you to use to get to the target. Here's the method I want mm-hmm. you to use to secure the target. Here's the route I want you to do to get back. Yeah. So that's the plan. Now you take ownership and, and go execute. Now, can you really take ownership of that plan? If someone else gave you the whole thing? I mean, I gave you the whole thing, yeah. right? Is that your plan? No. No, it's your plan. plan. Yeah. It's my plan. So when you go in the field, and now you come up against an obstacle and you're executing my plan. What's your attitude? Well, it's not my plan. It's yeah. his and, plan. Yeah. And you're at an obstacle now and you're like, hey, Jocko didn't think of this. Right, right. So right. his plan's yeah, yeah. So now you just back away and you come back and you say, hey, we failed the mission because you didn't think of this. You didn't think of this option. Yeah, yeah. Right. So <clears throat> that's me taking too much ownership. So what I need to do is I say, hey, here's the plan or here's the mission. How do you want to do it? Mm. And now if you're a good leader, you'll go get with your people and you'll say, oh, Hey guys, here's the plan or here's the mission that we have to accomplish. How do you guys want to do it? Now you all come up with a good plan and you come back to me and you say, here's the plan. And I say, that looks pretty good. Go execute. And now when you hit an obstacle in the field, what's your attitude? I need to adapt. I need to adjust. Yeah, what's your plan? Yeah, yeah. You'll make it we came win. up with this. Yeah. Yes. So can you take too much ownership? The answer is yes, you can. So with just about every, you, you can name a trait, right? You can name a trait from a leadership perspective that you think is a positive trait and you'll immediately see that if you go too far with it, it'll become bad. It'll mm-hmm. become bad. So you have to be balanced. So even as I came up with the dichotomy of leadership, I had to be humble enough to say to myself, you know what? Being aggressive is really, really good most of the time, but <laughs> if you're too aggressive, that's not good. Yeah. So like you said earlier, you're constantly questioning everything. And to me, what that is, that's, that's humility. That's mm-hmm. you being humble enough to say, you know what, I really don't understand this that well. Yeah. And, and there's some things in my life that I don't get. Whereas opposed, as opposed to you walking around saying, I already got this figured out. Yeah. I already know what I'm doing. I already know where I'm going. I already know what God is specifically. I already yeah. know what's going to happen to me when I die. All those things. But instead you're questioning everything, which mm-hmm. in my mind is a positive thing. Yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> is there anything that is missing in your life? You feel like something's missing? I, I know I feel like I'm living a pretty good life right now. I mean, I, yeah. I'm totally blessed. I mean, I got a great family. I got great kids. I got a great company. I got, I got f- uh, working with great people. Yeah. No, you're healthy, healthy. Good. Yeah. healthy, you know, I get to work out, train. I'm feeling good in the dream, man. Yeah. Living That's the great. dream. So you never feel like there's something myth- missing for you right now. You're, if there is, you're working towards it. You're 
working on the next book, you're building the business. Yeah, well, there's a difference between something missing and am I satisfied? Yeah. Right? Because I'm not satisfied. I mean, yeah. I always want to go. Like, I never, I never get done with the end of the day and go, cool, mission accomplished. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like job. not even yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not satisfied, but you feel like nothing's missing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's a fair statement. What brings you the most joy in your life and makes you smile the most? Oh, I mean, my kids. My kids are yeah. cool. They're funny. <laughs> my, you know, my, my wife and kids. Yeah. yeah. My, my wife and kids are cool and funny and... And we have a good time and lots of inside jokes and all that. Yeah. You know, and I, and I train jujitsu and that, that's very fun. And surf, that's fun. Yeah. Play how, guitar, that's fun. How old are your kids again? Age? 20, 18, <clears throat> 16, and 10. And what's the biggest lesson you learned about, being a, uh, about yourself being a, a father to them? Your kids are not going to be who you want them to be. <laughs> you can't train them to be. They're, they're gonna be who they are. Uh -huh. And you can give them some course corrections a little bit, mm -hmm. but th they're going to be who they, who they are. And the more you try and force them into what you want them to be, the harder they're gonna push back and rebel. Wow. Yep. Did you learn that the hard way or did you yep. get... Yep. So you tried to train them in a certain way or... Yeah, somewhat. And it's pretty obvious, like, f from my perspective, I was, I was having a similar conversation with a bunch of uh, executives and, and they were, we were talking, we, you know, we went down the road because we're having dinner now, so we're done talking about yeah. work, but now everyone wants to ask me about, you know, parenting and everything else. And, and I said at the table, I'm like, hey, who here ended up doing exactly what their parents wanted them to do? And there's like one guy out of 10, <laughs> right? Because most people... You know, your parents are wanting you to do this thing yeah. and you do something else. I mean, I joined the Navy when I was 18 years old. Like that's, that probably wasn't even on the checklist of top 20 things that my parents wanted me to do. Right. Not even <laughs> in the same ballpark, right? Yeah. They didn't want you to go to war. Yeah, yeah, they didn't want that. So here you go. Yeah, see ya. That's, so the more you try and kind of pigeonhole your kids into being something that you want them to be, the worse off it's going to be. It's the, it's the same thing with leadership. Mm. It's the same thing with leadership. If I'm if I'm trying to force my plan down my team's throat, the more resistance I'm going to get from it. Whereas if I plant the seed and I allow that plan to grow with them, mm. the better it's going to be received. Like when people ask me, how do you get people to buy in? Well, you you allow them to come up with come up with a plan yourself. What if what if in your mind you're like you really know that plan's not that good? It depends on how bad it is. How bad is it? Or what's at stake? Mm. If, you're, if you're working for me and you're going to meet with a client and you have a bad pitch that you're going to give them and the client is some tiny client that I think is a low probability of us working with right. and the contract doesn't really matter, I'd be like, hey, hey, give it a shot. Here's a couple. I might give you a couple adjustments. Mm -hmm. And, and give you some coaching on it. And then you go and you do your thing and you come back and you're like, oh, no, we didn't land it. And I say, <laughs> well, what do you think? Let's debrief. Mm. And now we talk about it. I said, you know, you said this and you said that. Here's some other ways to go about it. I might even actually have you do it to me. So then I could sit there and take some notes and say, hey, here's some other things that might have worked. Now, if you were going to meet with a big client that really was going to add value to our company, I'm going to, I'm going to either step in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm going to step in and be like, okay, let's think about that. What's their reaction going to be? And, and by the way, that's what I'm not going to say. No, don't do it that way. I'm going to say, give me that. Tell me that again, and let me hear. Let me give you some objections that you might hear from mm, them. That's good. And all of a sudden, I'll let you come up with the solutions. Mm. Even though I'm sitting there going, yeah, what he needs to say is this. No, I'll let you come up with the solution. So then you're kind of going in there like you got this dialed, mm. and then you're going to feel like you won, which yeah, you did. That's great. Which is great. It gives you more ownership, more respect in yourself, confidence, belief. How important is, is feedback for leaders? Get, getting feedback from peers, coaches, or employees, team members. Feedback is how you get better. Yeah. No feedback, no improvement. So if, and if you're not humble, you're not looking for feedback and you're not listening to it. So if you think you know everything, you're not listening, you're definitely not asking for it. And even when it gets told to you, you don't, you don't listen to it. Yeah. So feedback is, is built upon being humble. What would you say is in your way to getting to the next level? What feedback do you think you need to hear or receive from your team or people in order to reach the next goals that you have? I mean, um, the weird thing about me is, even though you might think, look at me and think, oh, who's gonna tell this guy anything, right? <laughs> the reality is, if anyone of my friends, my team, anyone that works for me up and down the chain of command, if they think I'm wrong, everyone will say, hey, I don't know if that's a good plan. So 
Even, you know, when I was a task unit commander, in, so I'm in charge and I'm the head SEAL for these 40 SEALs. I'm the main guy. Yeah. Anyone in that chain of command, those guys would all come to me and say, hey, I don't know if this is a good way to do it. And you know what I'd say? Why not? What do you think? What, what are you thinking? How do you think we should do it? Mm. My mind is open. If my plan is bad, please tell me. They would know that. Mm. So uh, my, my, my friends, my family, they'll tell me when I'm doing something wrong all day long. They're not intimidated or scared of you? No. That's good. No. So how does a leader cultivate that with his family, friends, team, in order to welcome the feedback of the information? Yeah, what you do is when somebody gives you feedback, you listen to it. Yeah. This is like, you know, just the other day we have a, we have a, uh, a leadership event that we do two or three times a year. But the, the thing that I was telling this group of people was, as a leader, you should be listening 98% of the time and talking 2% of the mm -hmm. time. So every time you come to me and you say, hey, Jocko, I don't like this plan. I don't say shut up and do it my way. No, <laughs> I say, I say how would you want to do it? Yeah. Tell me what you don't like about it and then tell me how you want to do it. So therefore, the next time you have an objection, you're like, you know the door's open. You know that I'm going to be open-minded and listen to you and that's how you build it. Every time you shut someone down from, list, from, from speaking their mind, you actually are creating a negative environment where you're not going to get the feedback. And if there's no feedback, as we just said, yeah. you're not going to improve. What are two things that any leader could do to improve their leadership skills right off the bat, two things you can think of. And what are two things that wannabe leaders do that hold them back from being great leaders? So what are two things they could add to, yeah, to two our things skill that you sets? Add, number one is listen, mm -hmm. which, which we just talked about, so that's fresh on my mind. Yeah. And you'd be surprised about how many leaders are thinking that because they're in a leadership position, they should be talking all the time. Mm. Wrong answer, wrong answer. I'll sit through a meeting with a client or with one of my companies and I'll listen for 38 minutes. And at the end of those 38 minutes, I'll have already thought through every discussion that's been had, you know, you want to argue with him and he's arguing with her. And guess what? I get to sit there and assess those arguments and see which one is the most important. Meanwhile, you're expending all your ammunition. She's expending all her ammunition. He's given up everything he's got. I'm learning all their thought patterns. I'm learning the, the pros and cons of each one of their arguments. And I do that for 38 minutes. And in the 39th minute, I say, hey, here's what I think we should do. Mm. And guess what? Because I've done an accurate assessment and listened, I'm actually going to be able to make the best decision. Yeah. It wasn't because I was smarter. It wasn't because I had better tactical understanding. It's because I actually shut my mouth, listened to everyone spill their guts, learned everything that they knew, and did a good detached mm. uh, assessment of, of what the right thing to do was. So listen, and the other one is the word that I just used, which is detach, which is not getting emotional, not getting into the weeds about stuff that doesn't matter. If you can take a step back and look around, mm. you're gonna see infinitely more than you can when you're in the weeds, staring the firefight in the face, looking down the sights of your weapon shooting. If you're doing that, you can't see anything else. Just think about that metaphor right there. Yeah, yeah. If I'm looking down the sights of my weapon and I'm shooting, my world is this big. The minute that I stop shooting, point my weapon at high port, take a step back and actually look around, I can see infinitely more. Yeah. So apply that to a meet. This is the meeting that we just talked about, yeah. a 38 minute meeting. All this chaos is happening. Sure, I'm the boss. I could jump in there and start arguing and giving my opinion. But what am I really doing then? What I'm really doing then is I'm in the weeds and I'm not able to assess what is actually happening. So, that, so there you apply it there to your personal life. If you and I are arguing, you're my friend and you did something and now we're starting to escalate an argument and I'm starting to get emotional, am mm. I able to listen to you anymore? Yeah. Am I able to logically figure out what's going on? If I'm talking to my wife and she did something that made me mad and now I'm starting to raise my voice, is that, is that whole situation going in the right direction? No. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. So what I need to do is take a step back, detach, calm down, listen to what she's saying, and then try and assemble a logical thing to say back without, without saying, you need to calm down mm. or you're too emotional. No, 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 no. Because if, if you come to me and you're mad about something, you come to me, whether it's, whether it's my wife or whether you're a business partner, you come to me and you say, 
the dang, the supply department didn't give me the stuff I needed. If I say, hey, calm down, right? If that's my reaction, then you realize that I'm against you, mm. <laughs> right? I don't get it. And so now it's me and the supply department against yeah. you. No one understands. No me. one understands. So I do a little technique. What is that? Yeah. I call, I call it reflect and diminish. So I'm going to reflect your emotions back to you, but I'm going to diminish them a little bit so that we're not escalating the situation. How would you do this with your wife? So if you, example. well, if you come to me and you go, the supply department's yeah. been late for, they're two weeks late on this stuff. I don't say calm down. I say, I say, oh, you got to be kidding me. Two weeks. And you go, yeah, can you believe it? Ah, that's horrible. We got to put a solution. We got to get that figured out. In the meantime, what do we need to do right now to get the problem solved, mm. right? So we already, now we're on the same team so we can work together to find yeah, a solution. We bonded on the pain. Yes, yes. We felt the pain. Yes, we're, we're on the same team. Yeah. Okay, my wife, what's gonna make my wife mad? Um, the ice machine's not working, right? The ice machine's not working. It's in the your fault. It, it, whether it's my fault, but yeah, it, we yeah. don't know. The ice machine's not working. By the way, this is a real story. This yeah. is happening today. <laughs> really? The ice machine's not working. I mean, she didn't get mad about it, but the ice machine's not working. If I go, hey, chill out. You have a refrigerator and a house, <laughs> and we don't get plenty of things. You can just calm down, yeah, yeah. right? Is that how's that going to go? It's not going to go good. Mm -hmm. Now she's going to get mad. Now it's me against her, you know. So instead, the ice machine's not working. Ah, man, that thing is junk. Have you called the the repair guy? You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, we're on the same team, and she's yeah. like, well, no, I haven't, but I'm about to. Okay, cool. As opposed to the ice machine's not working. Well, okay, do you want me to have ice shipped in from Alaska there, princess? <laughs> right? That's not going to go over well. So, so what would you call it? Reflect, reflect and, and diminish. diminish. When you figure this out on your own, the amount of pride and dignity and self-respect you have. That's why I walk around the streets with a backpack <laughs> and just like, I don't need anything else. Yeah. You figure it out by going inside yourself.